Here's to whiskey kisses, the peachy taste of sin, Edinburgh morning with the smell of brewing on the wind. Here's to lighting bonfire. It's whiskey time. Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud. My name is Adam Bradshaw, and we are gathered here today on the Dram Association YouTube channel for an Easter flavor hunt with the SNWS of Canada. Yes, it is outturn 126, and if you're watching this on the, the day of launch, that is Friday, April the 8th, all of these whiskies are up right now at strathliquor.com forward slash SMWS. If they're still available, you'll see them right there on the page. Some of them might have sold out already because we had a small allotment of some of them. However, one of them is actually going to a draw. Um, so we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to that whiskey. But uh, yeah, if you want to enter the draw for uh, the rights to purchase one of these whiskies, that's right there as well at strathliquor.com forward slash SMWS. I recommend pausing the video here, taking a quick peek at what's available, because um, it might be gone by the time the video ends. Um, so if there's something that really, really piques your interest right off the get-go and you know that you want to buy it, I, re I recommend doing so now. Don't wait. Um, however, the purpose of this video is to give you my impressions of some of these whiskies, a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of my own uh, flavor notes and some information about where they're from uh, to help you make a more informed choice if you couldn't come to one of our outturn preview tastings because uh, some of these whiskies as is often the case with the SNWS are not whiskies that from distilleries that you'll necessarily recognize or maybe they're styles that are not necessarily in line with um, the distillery's normal output. Um, so we have some really, really interesting whiskeys here today. Um, really interesting. I would say that this is one of the most, um, I don't want to say the word interesting again, because I've just said it twice in a sentence, but I'm going to say it a third time. Interesting outturns we've had in a long time, especially for whiskey fanatics, because there's lots of different styles of whiskey going on in this one. Um, so yes, we have a single cask spirit, but it's actually... A whiskey. It's just a different type of whiskey. It's not a malt. Um, uh, pretty much the only style of whiskey that we see in the SNWS that we're not getting here today is we don't have a single grain, unfortunately. But, you know, it's only a matter of time until we see another one of those. But we've got some really interesting stuff here. Um, we're kicking it off today with When Fruit and Cream Collide. Rich toffee and milk chocolate fused with buttery icing sugar on vanilla sponge cake, while fruity aromas suggested tangerines, cherries, and rhubarb, and apple crumble. The first sip excited the fruit receptors to indicate peaches, apricots, and oranges coated with sticky treacle and a sprinkling of charred oak. Adding water released tinned fruit salad with cherries and chunks of pineapple and mango, 
buttery textures suggested croissants, a baked banana bread, becoming more nutty and creamy on the palate. Meanwhile, a combination of herbs and juniper berries brought a lovely complexity that joined balsa, sweet biscuits, and nutmeg on the finish. Mm. This is 88.24. Now, we don't see 88s very often. Um, I probably should have written this down, but I got a note from Kelly. I believe this is only the second time we've seen an 88 in uh, in the SWS Canada here. One of 182 bottles that came from this cask, and the cask in question is a Refill X Bourbon Hogshead. This was aged for 12 years, came out at 52.9% ABV, and was distilled on the 4th of February 2009 in the Speyside region. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I've tried this before um, because at the time of recording, we're in between the two outturn preview tastings that we're doing for this month. I'm very much looking forward to the second that is happening in a couple of days at time of recording. Happened yesterday at time of release. So uh, sorry if you missed it and you wanted to come along. But uh, the good news is, at the time that this video is going out, tickets go on sale for next month. Uh, so if you want to join us for the next Outturn Preview Tastings, they are on Sunday, May the 1st, and Thursday, May the 5th. And I almost put that Thursday one onto a Wednesday just for a change, just so we could have a Star Wars-themed one. I want, you know, May the Drams be with you, that'd be awesome, on um, May the 4th. Um, but uh, it wasn't to be. Thursday it is, because that seems to be a very popular day for whiskey drinking. I'm not entirely sure how that happened, but Thursday's a good day. All right, and fruit and cream collide. Beautiful cork pop as ever. So I don't remember this one um, immediately sort of wowing me, to be honest. I remember this one being a creeper, as sometimes the first whiskies are, so. Uh, whiskey number one in the lineup is always a hard one to place because for a lot of people it's the first drink of the day and that's the case for me today. In fact, um, because I've been sick for uh, the last uh, about a week, I haven't had a whiskey in about a week. This is going to be my first whiskey in at least six days. So that's that's an oddity for me. I'm not sure I've gone that long without a whiskey for a while. Um, but the thing that I noted about this whiskey in particular, and as I was about to say, happens a lot with whiskey number ones, is it really opened up a bit later. Um, this is this is a whiskey that really enjoys interesting company, if you will. Um, it's a little bit quiet on its own, you know. It's a little bit of a um, introvert, I guess. But when you get it alongside something else, uh, after you've had a couple of drams, <laughs> after, after it's had a couple of drinks, it really opens up. Uh, yeah, after a couple of drams or maybe maybe some food, this is an absolute stunner. It really it really blossoms. Mm. Well, I've got to say, today on the nose, it's really, really quite something. Yeah, it is a bit of a, it's a classic space slider. It's, it's sweet, fruity, and mellow. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I am getting, um, weirdly, um, like, freshly baked brioche and apple slices. And uh, it's, I, don't, I don't think that's something I've ever had together, but that's what this smells like. It's like an, a, an apple sandwich, I guess. I don't think that's a thing. Um, hmm. Or maybe like a, maybe like a fresh baked muffin that's got apple pieces in it. Like a, a cider muffin. That wasn't the made cider muffins. I think I there was a, a little cafe in Melbourne made cider muffins. They were great. I think they actually used apple juice in the muffin mix as well. They were super good. Hmm. Oh yeah. Hmm. Lots of nice, rich, acidic, fresh fruits. It's not fruity in the. I, I don't, it doesn't feel tropical, and it doesn't feel citric, and it doesn't feel like berries. It feels very much orchard fruit. This is this is screaming apples and pears, and maybe even going towards peaches and apricots as well. Very, very fresh. Really fresh. Whether that's fresh fruit or freshly baked breads, that fresh is the perfect word to describe this whiskey. Very, very pleasant today. I'm in the right mood for this whiskey, apparently. This is a good um, breaking of the fast. 
Actually, in perfect thing for Easter, if, if anyone's given up whiskey for Lent, this would be a fantastic Easter dram to uh, to welcome you back to the wonderful world of whiskey. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. I'd love to know, actually, if anyone is in the habit of giving things up for Lent, and if anyone's ever actually given up whiskey for Lent, let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear about that. Um, never something that really crossed my mind, to be honest. I haven't given up something for Lent since I was in high school. But, uh, yeah, and it wouldn't have been whiskey back then. Not because I didn't drink it, because I wouldn't have given it up. Hmm. <laughs> Lovely. So, one of the things we did at our uh, at our outturn preview tasting um, last week, over a week ago now, um, was a little bit of a twist on the regular formula. So, something that we've often done at uh, was uh, the the job of uh, the co presenter often, and Brett really shone at this was trivia to do with how old the whiskey is. Well, you know, you, I've already told you how old this whiskey is. It's twelve, twelve years aged. Um, but it's, it's interesting because it gives you a, a real sense of the time frame, right? If you hear about a whiskey where, oh, uh, the number one hit single of that year was by the Spice Girls. It, it's like, oh, it gives you a, like a, it's, it's one thing to say a whiskey is 20 years old. It's another thing to think about what the world was like 20 years ago. So in honor of that, I'm going to be telling you a little bit of trivia about the year the distillery was founded. Um, today, um, which I think is actually super neat, and it's something I've never really thought about that much. You often hear about distilleries that are, you know, of certain ages, and you're, oh, that's cool, like, this is the old distillery in Scotland, uh, but, you know, what else was happening that year? Um, so, on the year that this distillery was founded, the first recorded use of the word computer as a calculation mechanical device was used. The first ever time the word computer was used. And that was 1897. <laughs> now, I don't think there's many people on the planet who are English speaking um, who have no, who don't use the word computer every day now. It's <laughs> it's wild to think that when this distillery was founded, it might have only been uttered once, uh, or maybe not even at all, depending on the time of year, right? Um, so that's that's really interesting. Um, this. Whiskey is from Speyburn Distillery, and yeah, I think it's the only only the second time we've ever had it. Super cool whiskey. It is available as all of these already are at strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS right now for two o two fifty two two hundred and two dollars and fifty two cents. So if you don't have a Speyburn in your collection and you're trying to catch them all, as it were, uh, this is a great opportunity to have a particularly good Speyburn. And I have to be honest here. Um, I've not had the best experience with Speyburn. Um, it's it's one of those whiskeys that I it, it was hard for me to recommend because we we did a tasting we had the fifteen and I was like this is just nothing special uh, and it sat on our shelf for years. It was really hard to get rid of. If it tasted like this, I would have sold it much quicker. Um, possibly instantly. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you are interested in finding out what Spayburn is like when it's really quite special, um, this is a great opportunity. And if you like me, if you like me, uh, no, if you, uh, similar to me, um, have had somewhat rough experiences with Spayburn in the past, this is quite the redemption dram for them. Hmm. Well, on with the show, because whiskey number two today is light-hearted memories. There was so much going on nosing this sample neat. Quince jelly, beeswax, shea butter, creme caramel, and the more senior, not an age, panellist, remembered days gone by of coconut sunscreen, wax crayons, and a message straight out of the fax machine. The taste was a vanilla dream, caramel wafers, Belgian waffles, as well as scones dipped in honey. Diluted, we found the scent of white chocolate buttons, almond paste, cream horns, dried guava in marzipan, followed by chantilly cream, lemon posset, and shortbread on the palate. Anyone for a gram of coke? Ideally, with a pims in one hand and a mallet in the other. <laughs> so, I remember this one well from the tasting the other week, because this is... <laughs> the weird, weirdly the most English tasting whiskey I've ever had. And, you know, I, I have some English whiskey behind me. Um, 
and, and this is not English, this is very much Scottish, but it tastes very much of a, a quintessential Sunday afternoon in the homeland. Um, I don't know why I was putting on an English accent there. I already have an English accent. Anyway, um, yeah, light-hearted memories. This is cask 135.33, out turn of 215 bottles coming out of a first filler bourbon hogshead, and it was aged for nine years, um, distilled on the 5th of May 2011 in the Highland region. It was bottled at 58.4% ABV. Um, yeah. What a frightfully spiffing idea. We'll have tea on the lawn and play a game of croquet, ideally with pims in one hand and a mallet in the other. Ah, oh, sounds lovely, doesn't it? I actually played croquet on my birthday the other week. It was it was lovely. Um, and, and if you're familiar with my, my co-host at the uh, tasting recently, Phaedra, um, it's, uh, it was Phaedra that has reintroduced me to the game of croquet. Um, it's actually her croquet kit we used, so thanks, Phaedra. Um, light-hearted memories. Oh, indeed, and I have wonderfully light-hearted memories of drinking this whiskey already. So let's see if nostalgia is being good to me today because I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's see if it takes me back. It reminded me of watching the cricket game. Live, not on TV, you know, fully on the, on the lawn with a cucumber sandwich and then a, a scone afterwards. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Weirdly cucumbery, actually, which is a tasting note that I'm, I often find in Royal Bracklers, oddly enough. Uh, not not this distillery. This is not a Royal Brackler. Mm. Yeah. Another really nice sort of lighter, more friendly style of whiskey um, going into number two here. Mm. Hitting all those classic juicy oak and vanilla notes. You know, mostly the oak and vanilla right now, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is gorgeous. I'm not sure I'm getting the fax machine, but yeah, no, I'm definitely getting like a Belgian waffles, caramel wafers, those kind of more on the more decadent side of the sweets. Mmm, creme caramel. And it, I mean this in the best way possible because it, it's, I don't take this as a flaw or as like a, um, like me starting to say it's soapy or anything because it's really, really not. But it reminds me of the shower gel I'm using right now, which I think is actually shea butter um, shower gel. It's really, and it, honestly, I, I, I can't, every time I have a shower right now, I'm not going to be use, buying the shower gel again. Not because it's not pleasant. It, it's very, very pleasant, but it's a little weird. Every time I have a shower, I like crave cake. Uh, it's it's like I'm washing myself with like cake batter. It's really bizarre. Um, I don't know. I, I think I, I think I really like it, but I, it definitely makes me hungry for naughty food in the morning. Yeah, cupcake batter. I want to say cupcake batter on here. Hmm. White chocolate buttons, almond paste. That's all with water, and I I I feel I neglected to have any water with round number one, so I won't make the same mistake twice. Let's have a. Couple of drops in here. Love the viscosity on that. Nice. It mentioned wax in the uh, in the tasting notes there, and you can see adding water to this that it does have an awful lot of uh, oils sort of closed up and ready to jump out at you in this whiskey. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Yeah, it's oak and vanilla before the water, and after the water, it unleashes the juice. Mmm, very pleasant. Yeah. All right, so, weirdly enough, I, I came up with this trivia before uh, I actually uh, tasted this whiskey, or even read the tasting notes. I didn't know it had a whole English thing going. But the year that this distillery was founded uh, was the first and so far only year that England has won the World Cup. A little more recent than the last one. This is 1966, and the distillery, of course, is the Great Loch Lomond. Um, I've said many a time, and I'll say it again for emphasis, if I could have one distillery for the rest of my life, and only one, it would be Loch Lomond. Um, it's not my favourite, 
Um, it's it's not, I would say, the best distillery, is it? But it's by far and away the most interesting and diverse distillery in terms of the output that it has. If you were only to have one distillery for the rest of your life and you enjoy exploring whiskey like I do, there's a lot to explore with Loch Lomond. Um, the place and the whiskey. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's why they have several codes with the SNWS, because they have several different manufacturing techniques. This is the 135.33, so this is their traditional pot still style whiskey, which just goes under the name Loch Lomond. There's no, no funky names going on with this one. Mm. Well, slash of R. Let's see what whiskey number three is. Oh, yes, whiskey number three. This is... Um, this is a really interesting one as well. Uh, whiskey number three today is Paris, oh sorry, Paris in the spring. But before I go to Paris in the spring, I just I feel like I should add one of those scratch record scratch sounds in there. I don't know I'll do the price, did I? Um, so as always, this is already for sale and uh, it is available right now, so long as there's some left, for 171.22. And I say so long as there's some left because there's, we only got one case. Um, so I think I saved one, maybe two for the online release and the others, um, were, um, went to a draw, uh, the, uh, in-person tastings. But, uh, yeah, if you are interested in some lighthearted memories from Loch Lomond, um, yeah, I, I hope you're watching this at around 10 o'clock on, uh, on Friday morning, because if not, yeah, but it means worth checking, worth checking, strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS. And now we'll actually go out to whiskey number three, Paddy in the Spring. The scent transported us like magic into the old artist quarter of Paris in springtime. Montmartre, with its lively, narrow cobbled streets, thronged with bistros, brasseries, cafes, and artists getting out their easels and paintbrushes. We sat down at one of the cafes, and to our surprise, we found a Beardemeyer tort on the menu, a rich Austrian cake consisting of layers of dark and light sponge, cranberry and quince jam, and a light nougat filling. Diluted, we ordered, along with the cake, a peppermint tea, lit up a... I, I don't know what this word is. Goldwiss says? Goldwiss gol, says. Gol, Goldwiss says. Uh, and found ourselves in a perfect position to watch the world go by. I'm going to Google that right now. Um, grab my phone and Google what Gal we says, because I, I, I have this weird, faint memory. I'm, I'm wondering if it's like a hooker or something. Um, they just say lit up. So let's see. Gal Louis says, in real time, a little bit of Google. It's a brand of French cigarettes. <laughs> All right. That's, that's an obscure tasting note. Um, I think it's more like a lucky strike, personally. No. Um, yeah, apparently French cigarettes. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Um, cool. Let's see what we're dealing with here. This is Paris in the Spring. It is SNWS 5.79, an outturn of 187 bottles coming out of a first fill ex-bourbon barrel that was matured for 18 years. Um, it came out at cast strength, of course, at 55.4, and it was distilled on the 16th of January, 2003, in the Lowlands. So I mentioned at the, uh, at the beginning of this video how this is a particularly in interesting one. Use the word again, because I can't think of a better one still. Um, intellectual. It's a very particularly intellectual whiskey tasting, because we've got lots of different styles. And this is one of them, because this is triple distilled. Um, and it's not often we see triple distilled whiskey in the SNWS. Uh, always a pleasure to have something specifically from this distillery, of course, as well. Um, although it's not the only triple distilled whiskey we've had. This is, um, yeah, this is super cool. Beer by a tort, which I've never had, but it sounds delightful. Um, in Montmartre, which I don't think I've been to, but uh, I've certainly been nearby. I've been to Paris a couple of times. Yeah, all right, well. Let's enjoy this dram together again. Oh, what a pop. It was just waiting to get out, wasn't it? All right. Mmm. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. This is, this is, this is lovely. 
Uh, okay, so I'm getting Battenberg on the nose. Um, I presume an English cake. It sounds German, but um, you know we've got our royal family is German, so might as well have German sounding cakes as well. Um, Battenberg, you might have come across it. It's that's um, so a very marzipan driven sponge cake that's usually in a um, usually made in a pattern where it's like a pink square and a yellow square and the pink square and a yellow square. So it's like a little little fun little checker grid. Mmm, smells lovely. All right. Mmm. 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 Tastes, to me, this reminds me of when I was about 14, I was staying in a convent in Bruges, as I often did in my teenage years. Um, and when I was 14, I looked like I was 18. And luckily, the drinking age in Belgium is 16, so it was very easy for me to get beer. Um, I, I remember getting a particularly alcoholic, it was kind of one of those challenge beers, where it's like, oh my god, can you believe it? This beer is like 17% alcohol or something. Uh, so I got, I got something, um, and it was slightly warm. Um, and I, I snuck, I snuck out, um, of, of the room at night and decided I wanted to go drink it alone in a dark, creepy garret, uh, which is what the nuns called their attic rooms. So this, to me, weirdly reminds me of drinking alcoholic high-proof beer alone in a dark, incredibly creepy garret in a Belgian convent. Can you get any more specific? Yes, it was a Tuesday. No. <laughs> mm. Mm. It feels mm. cheeky. It feels dark and slight. It's not that sweet, but it reminds me of molasses. It's got that darkness to it that molasses does. Mmm. Hmm, you know what else it reminds me of? And this might be the weird French cigarette thing. It reminds me of um, uh, the amaretto pipe tobacco that I used to smoke in Belgium as well. <laughs> Weirdly Belgian, uh, this one. Yeah, the last one was very English. This one's very Belgian. Um, I'm not sure where they're getting Paris from. For me, this is Bruges in the summertime. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. It would have been very disrespectful of me to to smoke inside the convent, so I never did. I was, I, you know, I, I would drink because I could clear up all the evidence of that, but I would never smoke in the convent. Um, but if I if I if if I could have smoked in the convent and uh, had some pipe tobacco in that creepy garret that I drank beer alone in, um, I possibly would have done because. It would have gone very well, as is evident in the taste of this whiskey. Um, yeah, let's add a little bit of water in here. It is 55.4, despite its age. 18 years, so more senior whiskey. Hmm. And the distillery is more senior as well. So, the year that this distillery was founded... James Monroe became the fifth president of the United States of America, and the world saw its very first cholera pandemic. Yeah, 1817! Like, I've heard that Ockentoshan was founded in 1817 many a time, but it's never really been fully put into perspective like that for, before for me. Like, it had only been five presidents of the USA? And it was the first ever cholera pandemic? That is madness! Um, yeah. Really, really old distillery. Mm. Lovely. And if you are interested in picking up an 18-year-old Arkentoshan, um, the, the gem of the lowlands, triple distilled beauty, uh, it can be yours for two eighty nine forty eight, and it's available right now at strathlicker.com. And we did get two cases of this, so... If you are watching this a few days later, there's a higher chance that this is still available, so head, head over. It's worth, worth checking. Mm. So, 
I do normally open these videos by saying it's whiskey time, but today, of course, it is not only whiskey time, but it's also tobacco time. The aromas and flavors reminded us of our trips to Jerez to source these very casks. Imagine you're seated outside at a banco in Jerez with polished oak table and the waiter put down a bowl of toasted nuts and thinly sliced serrano ham. To drink, you order an Oloroso Dulce, VORS, which stands for Vinum Optimum Rare Signatum Sherry. Lightly chilled, smooth and unctuous, with that typical taste of cinnamon, dried fruits, candied orange peel, and a rich sweet finish. It certainly did hit that sweet spot. After a drop of water, we chose a rich dessert, cherry tart made with fresh blackberries in the buttercream, almonds, and plenty of Kirsch brandy. On the palate, hazelnut chocolate, walnuts, juicy black cherries, and chocolate chip acorn truffles. And we were reminded of an old Spanish saying, a meal without a glass of sherry is like a day without the sun. <laughs> That's gorgeous, isn't it? Ah, uh, well. Isn't this wondrous? So there's a bit of information on the back here of, uh, of uh, how this whiskey came to be. This small batch was drawn from the latest refresh of the SNWS Blended Malt Solera. It saw the addition of whiskies from both Speyside and Highland regions, and a cask makeup that included a mixture of quarter casks, hogsheads, and butts, all seasoned with PX or Oloroso sherries. Don't forget about the Spanish and American oak, too. The aromas and flavors reminded us of our trips to Jerez, where we sourced the very stocks. Very cool. So this is uh, unlucky or very lucky, uh, batch 13 of the uh, blended malts, and is uh, honestly, Really, really cool. Um, again, hitting on that geeky mix of different styles of whiskey theme that we have going on this month. Blended mulch, so more than one distillery went into this. Um, really interesting that we've got the mix of two different woods going into it as well, plus the two different types of sherry. This is super cool. Plus, it's also got that Solera vatting technique as well, which is where you have a, a, a large... Um, a very large cask, and you, when you empty it to fill up bottles, you don't empty it all the way, you leave some in there and then top it up with more stuff, so you've got this sort of endless continuation that some of the whiskey in there, or whatever, your are uh, it's not usually whiskey, um, it's usually uh, fortified wine maybe, or maybe a balsamic vinegar, uh, it's a very popular technique in Europe. Um, yeah, the, you actually get some of that really old stuff mingling with the younger stuff. It's a really cool technique to get depth of flavor, and you get so much flavor from all of those different techniques, mixing woods, mixing sherry styles, mixing Solera vat uh, of age of old and young, that makes this a really interesting premise for a blended malt. And I was really looking forward to trying this last week, and it, it certainly did not disappoint. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying it again right now. Um, this, I think all but one or two of the new whiskies went to a draw for the bottles that were made available at the <laughs> at the tasting last week. Um, and I expect it will probably happen again in a couple of days, but here we go. Ooh, lovely. Of course, we do save some for the online release, so... Although we almost definitely will sell out at both outturn tastings of this whiskey, do go online and check because there might still be some. Oh yes. Today this is telling me tales of tangerine skins on the nose. That is a uh, ah, quite quite different actually to uh, what I was getting last time. Um, tangerine skins actually. I don't think that's is that is there anything remotely sort of orangey in the tasting notes? I forget. Oh yeah, candied orange peel. Hey, look at me go. I read it, forgot it, and then smelled it. <laughs> uh, yeah, really cool. Yeah, I was getting a much more the Serrano ham, the meaty, the salted meat kind of thing um, first time around, which I thought was super unique, super cool. Cool label as well, by the way. There's probably... I would say this is actually my favorite artwork um, so far from the SWS's uh, blended malts. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. So, 
Mm. The youngest component of this, and remember it is Solaravatid, so there is going to be some older stuff in there as well, is 11. Um, and that was distilled on the 28th of September 2009. Um, as all of them so far have been, this is bottled at 50% ABV. This seems to be their uh, their bottling strength for the blended malts, which is fair. Um, and an outturn of 2,130 bottles were, of course, available globally, as they're trying to do with these releases. Yeah, I love what they're doing here. I, I, I really do enjoy these blended malts. I know that single cast, single malt whiskey is where the SNWS started, and it's still very much their emphasis, but... You know, there's always room to play around. There's always room for other styles. And I'm, I for one, I'm truly, truly grateful that they, they started doing this. Hmm. Because you get whiskeys this good and this interesting and this developed and crafted for a great price. So this is available $179.91, which means you have to be a member um, to buy this. It's under the 180 threshold. Mm, 179 anyone that's that's really good for an 11 year old sherry cask whiskey like this yeah i'm i'm a fan it's ah uh, yeah what can i say mm. it's glorious I want to I want to try and guess what's in it but frankly I can't I have no idea what's in this and it also doesn't really matter that's kind of the point right just enjoy it for what it is it's a glorious mystery hmm well hmm rolling on again with uh, different styles of whiskey. Um, and this has been teased that we have a single cast spirit here today that is still technically a whiskey. Technically, it's definitely a whiskey. Uh, we are moving on to our next whiskey today. Whiskey number five is pumpkin red apple sauce. Freshly baked, fluffy vanilla cupcakes. Breakfast cereals made out of toasted maize and wheat squares with a brown sugar flavor. Runny honey and ripe red delicious apples. On the palate, a wonderfully creamy texture like pumpkin apple sauce with plenty of brown sugar, cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice, and lemon zest. With the addition of a little water, the aroma had a gentle wood spice at first, followed by cinnamon swirls, golden syrup, and muscovado sugar, but at the same time, the freshness of honeydew melon and chamomile. We were now snacking on sweet and tangy dried apricots and papayas. Once you start, you can't stop. And, uh, yeah, this is a bourbon. It is B6.2, and they give us a bit of specific information about the mash bill, which is important, of course, to bourbon manufacturing. The mash bill was 70% corn, 20% wheat, and 10% malted barley, and the cask was coopered from 36-month air-dried staves that were then charred to a level 4. Super cool whiskey that we're about to have here. Um, yeah, this is... Four years aged, uh, which sounds young from a Scottish perspective, but this is not Scottish. This is definitely a bourbon. It is from New York State. Um, it was distilled on the 25th of March, 2015. An outturn of 168 bottles, coming at you at an ABV of 56.5%. Mm. Now, we don't want to say cask strength, but I guess in this case it's barrel proof. That's the right terminology, isn't it? Barrel proof whiskey. Uh, yeah. Super cool, and what makes this even more special is that this is been designated the Giving Spirit Bottle. And they've given us some information here on page 11, so I'm going to read out for you. In January 2020, we introduced our Giving Spirit program. Each quarter, SNWS Canada donates um, to charity 100% of its profits from the sale of a designated bottle. In 2021, we donated over $5,600 to four worthy charities and are continuing the trend in 2022. In January, we selected cask number 107.22, a dark abyss of bliss, as our giving spirit bottling. It sold out in a matter of days, and as a result, we have donated $1,260 to January's charity, the Canadian Mental Health Association. April's giving spirit bottle is pumpkin red apple sauce, and it may come as no surprise that we will direct our donation to help the Ukraine. 
We've chosen the Canada Ukraine Foundation. Um, for more information, you can visit uh, cufoundation.ca. It was formed in 1995 in order to coordinate, develop, and organize and deliver assistance projects generated by Canadians and directed to Ukraine. Their Ukraine humanitarian appeal has already delivered multiple trenches of sorry trenches uh, of aid effect to affected populations in all corners of the Ukraine, including some of the hardest hit cities in the north, east, and south of the country. Our support also extends to affected families who have made their way across the border into neighbouring countries such as Romania and Moldova, as well as providing food for internally displaced families from across Ukraine. We hope you'll continue to support the Giving Spirit programme by buying a great bottle of whiskey and supporting an urgent and important cause. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I, I, don't, I have nothing more to add to that. It's amazing um, that Robin Kelly decided to do this Giving Spirit programme and a very, very good choice, of course, of the charity this quarter. Very fitting, very appropriate. And, uh, yeah, um, I think they've picked a really interesting bottle as well uh, to go for that because... It's it's basically a guaranteed sellout. When was the last time we saw a bourbon in the SWS? A few years ago, I think. Um, and this is a particularly cool one. Um, from a distillery that not only have we never seen in the SWS series, it's point two. Uh, so it's only the second time it's ever been bottled, this one. We've never seen it in the SWS Canada, of course. But more than that, we've never seen it in any form here in British Columbia. To the best of my knowledge, this distillery has never made its way across the border officially, never been imported. There might be some tourists who have visited the States and brought some back for themselves, of course, but uh, it's never been officially available for sale, at least here in British Columbia, which is super cool. And what's also super cool is this one really flummoxed and confused people when they uh, had the, the tasting the other day, because it said on their mat, single cast spirit, they were wildly guessing as to what kind of spirit this was, and... About 85-90% of the room said that this was a rum, <laughs> which I found particularly entertaining, I have to say. And in fairness, it is quite tropical and quite sweet, so I can see where they're coming from. Mm. It's got that classic golden hue. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, if, if I didn't know this was a bourbon, I might guess rum as well. It is really wonderfully sweet and tropical on the nose. Mm. Melon. Melon's a really good... Honeydew melon, yeah. See, they, they talk in the tasting notes here very much of the, along the apple and pumpkin thing. Of course, it's named pumpkin red apple sauce. But I, I'm, I'm really getting... Um, Pineapple. Like, I'm not really getting apple. I'm getting pineapple. Like, the core of a pineapple, roasted. That's, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's, that's definitely where I'm at. It's also a little tiny bit sort of wood smoky on the nose as well, which is nice. Little bit of a star and east thing going. Oh, yeah. A little bit of clove. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's a new distillery, it's a new style of whiskey, yeah, you know, as in like it's a young style of whiskey, it's a whiskey that you bottle young, that's what I'm trying to get at here, um, bourbon was of course, it's not a new style of whiskey, it's been around for a very long time, um, but this is mm, exactly where it should be, this is, this is bourbon in very much the way that the SNWS feel it feels at home here, because uh, it's not stereotypical. It's not easy bourbon, you know. This is complex, interesting, different bourbon. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm really looking forward to um, presenting this again on Thursday's tasting. Um, cause as much as I very much enjoyed having this with Emily, um, on, on the Sunday tasting on Thursdays, my helper is Phaedra and she is really, 
really big on bourbons. Uh, she she probably knows more about bourbon than I do, and she's probably tasted more bourbons than I have as well. Uh, so I'm really excited to present this with her. Um, she I don't think she knows it's coming yet. Hmm. Ah, yeah, beautiful bourbon whiskey. If you're if you know that you like bourbons, um, then this is this is a great one to jump on. It's available right now, 165.13, and again, all of the SNWS Canada's profits for this bottle um, are going direct to help people affected by what's happening in the Ukraine right now. Uh, super cool. But where's it from? So, <laughs> this distillery was founded in the year that the iPhone was released in the United States. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty new distillery. Uh, it was founded in 2007. Yeah. Uh, it's called Finger Lakes. Um and you probably won't see that on a bottle, though, because they did it release their bourbon um, as Mackenzie Wheated Bourbon. Um, so this is a, a single cask, cask strength, um, sorry, barrel proof Mackenzie Wheated Bourbon. <laughs> and I hope the SNWS has bought a few of these, because I'd really like to see more of it in the future. Also... <laughs> Funny, funny little story I got from Kelly as well. The original plan was because they got this bottled down in the states, I, and I, th I, I have a feeling there was a bit of a thing with that because I think there's uh, a rule where it had to be bottled in the states if it was going to be sold in the states for bourbon um, or something along those lines. I think some of the early S and U S bourbons couldn't legally be sold in the United States because of that. Um, so I think that was part of it. Um, so they were planning on just sending it directly from the distillery up to Canada for our release. But that was actually going to cost more to send it um, by rail, I guess, or however it was going to get here from New York, um, than it was to just ship it over normally with things from Scotland. So our allotment went from New York to Edinburgh and then back over here again. Um, not exactly the most environmentally friendly of practices, but, I mean, honestly, like, the eight cases of it, um, or whatever it was that came across here, um, it, it isn't going to have a massive carbon footprint, so. But it is kind of bizarre that that happened, right? Hmm. It's a strange world, the world of logistics and border control and illicit spirits. All right, so time for some peat. We are in for a treat here. Whiskey number seven is an engine starter for cold mornings. The nose evoked a campfire. Toasted marshmallows, bacon crisps, green olives with lemon and thyme. The neat palate was a sudden firing up of our internal combustion engines. Salty olives, pickled ginger and jalapenos, chocolate limes, tarry smoke, coal tar soap, and chewing willow twigs. The reduced nose was quite fresh. Cucumber raita, glacier mints, lime juice on mango, salty feta, and honeyed baklava, somewhere between waves crashing on the shore and an old-fashioned steamy. The palate became sweeter and fruitier, but retained an enjoyable gentle astringency, lemon zest and gorse with leather, walnuts, and coffee grounds on the finish. <laughs> my oh my. Do my eyes deceive me or do we have a 66? Oh yes we do. This is 66.193, an outturn of 224 bottles, coming out at a cast strength of 61.3 ABV, coming from a first Philex bourbon barrel. Aged for seven years, uh, this is from the Highlands region, and was distilled on the 17th of September, 2013. <laughs> 66. How I love my 66s, and how I love this 66. Uh... Again, this was very sought after at Sunday's Tasting. <coughs> very much went to a draw. And I'm very much looking forward to trying it again. Oh, I love my job. Because I get to drink this whiskey. Mmm. Yeah. So I had a um, a snack at a house party once that someone made that was um, like twists of bacon um, that had like lime salt on them, and that that's what I'm getting on the nose here. It was like a, a salty lime bacon. Hmm. 
Mm. Oh, big, mm, deep, rich, almost mechanical feeling smokiness. Glorious. And I found it really interesting, actually. I don't know what was going on in the Sunday tasting, but about maybe a third of the room said they didn't really find any peat on this. Um, we had a bit of a we had a bit of a vote as to whether this should be um, classed as unpeated or lightly peated um, or regular peated. And yeah, no one no one said it was going to be heavily peated, but a surprisingly large amount of people didn't think this belonged in the peated category at all. I thought, if anything, this should be peated rather than lightly peated. So this is a little bit of everything to everyone, I guess. It's uh, Morpheus. It's smoke if you want it and not if you don't, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, for me, though, this is classic Highland peat. A little saltier than I'm used to from this distillery. Don't mind it at all, though. I like it quite a lot, in fact. Hmm. It's just an ex-bourbon cask, wasn't it? Yeah, first fill. Yeah. I'm wondering, because I've definitely had something from this distillery, I believe from the SWS, that was done in an ex Lafroy cask. And that would explain a little bit of the... A little bit of the twist on the normal formula, but... Hmm. Love it, love everything about it. I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water just to see what's going on there. And I'll give you some trivia about this distillery. Um, so when this distillery was founded, Annie Oakley famously wrote a letter to President McKinley offering the service of 30 lady sharpshooters. <laughs> really does put it into context, doesn't it? 1898. Oh. And that is the year, of course, um, where Scotland saw fit to grace upon its lands the distillery known as Ardmore. Mm, one of my favourites. Probably my favourite. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. That is mm. quite Morpheus actually. After water, it gets a lot drier. It's kind of tingly on the side of the tongue there right now it's yeah I think I preferred it without water so I'm gonna have one sec I can confirm I preferred it without water <laughs> that was fun um yeah, love this whiskey. Like I said, very, very popular. Um, and we, unfortunately, were meant to get two cases of this, but um, the uh, the distribution brands, the warehouse, screwed up and uh, misdelivered a case. So we don't know if it's going to turn up, but all we know is we only got one case. And at its place, I think we got um, three cases of Texas Mickeys of Wisers for some reason. I don't know what happened there. We sent it back, but uh, we may or may not get another case of this in the future. Fingers crossed it'll turn up. In the meantime, we only have a couple of bottles for sale today. Um, it is available to those who will cook off the draw and to those who are already members for $168.61. $168.61. Lovely. And our final whiskey today, and I teased at the beginning of this tasting that we have something that's going to a draw, and that would be this one. It's time for whiskey number seven. Let us go Dutch. Big plumes of dark grey smoke from the kiln combined with the Dutch spirit called kumil. In this case, a heavily smoked version of the famous herbal liqueur flavoured with caraway seeds, cumin, fennel and orris. We almost needed some Dutch courage to have a taste, but after that kick of sooty chilli and cremated pineapple, there was a lovely sweetness of ash rolled mango slices and peated peach cobbler. With water, we shoveled peat out of our brass-footed coal scuttle bucket into the fire, causing a massive puff of smoke, which soon combined with the briny lemon sweetness and medicinal flavour of cod liver oil. And if you haven't guessed from those tasting notes, this is Distillery 29. 29.284. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, mm. An Isla, of course. Um, this is 
cast strength at 62.2 from a second fill ex bourbon barrel, uh, distilled on the 22nd of April 2010, aged for 10 years. One of 217 bottles. <laughs> so, it says in the bottle here that this will not need a Dutch auction, uh, but what it will need is a draw. So, what we're doing is we're not selling these bottles right here and now. Um, we saved two bottles um, for the draw. We um, gave the opportunity for one bottle to each of the outturn preview tasting attendees, um, but the remaining two is going to be a, a member-wide draw only for BC members, um, or I don't know, maybe only for BC members. I haven't quite decided yet. If you're not in BC, uh, check the website. <laughs> That'll have more details. It might only be able to BC members. Uh, it might be open to BC and it might just be no, no Alberta members, to be honest, as, as, as harsh as that sounds. But uh, you guys got more and you've got two stores over there. So, you know, support your stores. In fact, welcome to uh, people who are watching this video who are regular customers of Legacy over in uh, over in Vancouver there. And of course, Keg and Cork in Edmonton and Kensington Wire Market in Calgary. It is uh, always a pleasure to have um, SNWS members from across the country watching this, and of course, a welcome, special welcome to um, members who are joining us from across the country in uh, Saskatchewan, Ontario. I know we've got people watching from those provinces. Maybe we've got someone from the Maritimes, um, maybe even Quebec. So drop us a line, drop us a note in the comment section if you're if you're watching us from far and wide. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, check out strathlega.com forward slash SNWS if you want to pick up some of these bottles. Uh, yeah, let us go Dutch. Available only via lottery. Um, to enter the lottery, you have to purchase a ticket for zero dollars. Uh, just throw it in your cart alongside whatever else you happen to be buying at the time, uh, or just the ticket if you're not purchasing anything else. And uh, yeah, we will draw two names in the next couple of days. So yeah, more details at strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS, and let's, let's open up a bottle and see what we're dealing with here. Because uh, this is very on point for the distillery, as you've probably noted from the tasting notes there. Medicinal, big PD beauty. Big PD beauty. Hmm. Weirdly closed on the nose right now. It might just be my my olfactory senses resetting after that Ardmore, but it's... Uh, there we go. It just needed a little, I think it just needed a little warmth, a little of oxygen, to, a little time to breathe. Oh, it's revving it up now. Oh yeah, we're full on hospital ward on fire now, guys. Here we go. Mm. It's the most ethical way to experience a burning hospital, isn't it? Mm, 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 mm. All right. Anything particularly jumping out at me here today? I see cremated pineapple, and I'm sorry, I still can't quite get the pineapple from the uh, from that bourbon out of my head. As much as I am tasting a little bit of pineapple, the amount of pineapple I got in that bourbon is blowing us out of the water. What I am getting on this though is very much the big old sooty mess. Um, it feels like a chimney sweeper's. Um, has visited and not done a particularly good job at cleaning up. Mm. Mm. In the nicest way possible, this feels like visiting grandma. Um, not because she drank this style of whiskey, not, not at all. Um, my granddad uh, drank teachers, though. That's uh, at least made by the same people. Um, but no, this is. Um, it feels like uh, it feels. It smells like old school ointments and, and burning leaves. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what grandma had against composting, but she would much prefer to burn stuff than. Than, than composted, I think. Or maybe that she just went through a lot of a lot of vegetables and didn't have a big enough yard. But she always had a little fire. Like it's the only time I ever remember as a kid having corn on the cob. 
uh, was visiting grandma. And I just distinctly remember when we ripped off the leaves, she would dry them and save them for um, uh, for kindling because she found that corn on the cob husk uh, or the leaves from the husk were really good dried up fire starters. I'm like, you get the newspaper every day. Surely that works better. I don't know why you why you go into so much effort for the same job the newspaper does, but sure. Um, Mm. Lovely, lovely touch of that, like, straight up lemon juice that you get with this distillery as well. Mm. And in case you don't know Distillery 29 by number, let's talk about uh, about <laughs> about this distillery. Um, interestingly, I actually forgot to write down the year that this was founded. Hopefully it's on, on the, the label, because uh, I have. Yeah, 1815. Luckily, I have a bottle of this, uh, official bottling of this behind me. In 1815, uh, Napoleon entered Paris with a force of 340,000 troops and begun his 100-day rule of Paris. It's a Napoleonic era. Napoleonic era distillery. Like, ah. Uh. I, I wish I'd done this style of trivia earlier to have a better grasp in my head of the like the age, the pedigree of some of these distilleries. It's wild, isn't it? Super wild to me. Uh, anyway, uh, the draw is available. The um, tickets are free to enter, of course. Um, but if you do win, you are expected to cough up the money. It's $266 for this cast-strength 10-year-old single cask Lefroig. It has been a wonderful outturn. Um, Hopefully you'll be able to join us for the May Outturn again. That's on the 1st and 5th of May uh, in person. If you are able to make it, tickets are available right now at Strathlicker.com. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see as many as many people come to that as possible. Um, what else is happening this month? Well, May is also going to, of course, be the Highland Games, where the SNWS is being represented. I'll be doing a tasting at the Highland Games. I'd tell you to go get tickets for that, but it's already sold out, so yeah. Um, <laughs> too late, I'm afraid. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic month for the SNWS, though. Uh, but we have April to go still before then, and if you feel like picking up one of these bottles, uh, here are the seven bottles that are available um, at strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS, and I will see you guys later on. Slan Javar, thanks for joining us. Grandfather's coat Sewn into the lightning Attention in a note Farewell to my family Farewell to the shore Till I see good fortune You'll see me no more The boat on the ocean Hit up like a cork And then one fine morning They sighted New York He stood on the gangway and breathed in the air Hello, land of plenty I've come for my share But he did like the ladies And the rise and the fall Of their ankles and dresses Out on the dance floor Rolling the dice And spinning the wheel But he took most delight In the subjects and There's talk of pistol, some say knife But all are agreed there was somebody's wife Some kind of commotion, a terrible fight He left the man dead and run into the night A train to loose, just one jump to He slept when I opened his six gun in bed Dreamed of the mountains and the green fields of home While crossing the plains where the buffaloes roll 
But it did like the ladies And the rise and the fall Of their ankles and dresses Out on the dance floor Rolling the dice And spinning the wheel But he took most delight In the searches and me thing to bear The mother's poor scorn while the children they stare But he took great delight in flash come to be Life ain't so bad where the girl ought to be Yes, they called him the kid Come by twenty-one All the need knew was the power of the gun And by twenty-three had shot five and down. He got him his way as he rambled round. But he did like the ladies and the rise and the fall of their ankles and dresses out on the dance floor. Rolling the dice and spinning the Most delight in the searches and me. There's bones in the desert and buzzers that fly in the highest of circles, just to wish he. But in matters of cruelty, it must be said A landlord will pick your bones before you're dead It was wild, Mescaleros, I heard a man say In a murderous gunfight, Nero Santa Fe A young man was taken, still very close So into the lightning tension but he did like the ladies and the rise and the fall Of their ankles and dresses out on the dance floor Rolling the dice and spinning the wheel But he took most delight in the searches and